Welcome to another episode of Low Budget Shooting. Uh, today I am going to be working with one of my customers and a friend of mine's uh, gun. This is called a High Standard HD Military. Uh, this particular one was made in 1947. Uh, although the gun, uh, the HD Military, was made from 1945 to 1950. Uh, there was an HD version that just said uh, high standard HD on it that was made before and I think it was like in 42 if I'm not mistaken. The gun um, has some notoriety to it because it was actually made uh, for the CIA at late, well not totally for them. The military used them for training because they're, they're got kind of heavy, they got weight to them so they're kind of like you know the weight of a 1911. Uh, so a lot of them were used for trainers but there was like 2500 of them that were made for the OSS which became the CIA and uh, and they had built-in integrated silencers that were on them and nobody really knew about those until uh, a guy by the name of Francis Gary Powers uh, just was tooling around in a U-2 airplane in 1960 and Russia decided they didn't like that plane there and decided to drop it. Anyways, uh, when he got caught, they recovered one of these HD militaries that was suppressed uh, in his plane and they uh, showed it during his trial and now it's in a museum in Russia. So, the reason why I'm doing this video today though is because there is an inherent problem, I think, in these old guns. And when I first got this one to repair, one of the complaints that I had was that the slide um, was not going back on it. Uh, it, wasn't re it wasn't returning. Uh, and, and so I found out that it was the return spring that was bad, and I replaced that, and I got that fixed. And so I'm going to show you uh, what the other problem is with this. So um, we racked the slide to put a new bullet in the chamber and then we're going to aim and we're going to pull the trigger and nothing happens so sometimes when you pull the the trigger the hammer back you can get it to shoot and if it doesn't shoot then what you got to do because right now there's a gap because the slide is not completely putting the bullet in the in the battery this gap there's a gap that's in between here that should not be there uh, so what I can do is I can pull the hammer back and I can push the slide forward and then I can shoot and it'll work um, I don't know if this loaded a new round it did not. There we go. And we'll try it again. Nope. So, let's drop the magazine out of here. So the problem that's happening is when, when the battery goes back, when, when the slide goes back, it is not putting the bullet in the battery all the way. There shouldn't be a gap in there. And let me get this guy out. Uh, when this goes forward, there shouldn't be a gap. If I move the slide stop forward a little bit, it will close it the rest of the way. But this should happen after, after it loads around. It should close all the way. And the reason this is happening... So if you want to break this down, there's a little button on top here. You have to pull the slide back, and then what you do is push that button down. And what that does is that holds the return spring in place. And then you can pull down this little stop lever here, and, oops, and, uh, never mind. There we go. And now it slides off. So what you got is this mechanism right here. This is the, the slide stop. And uh, the slide stop should be straight up 90 degrees or even a little bit forward. This one's actually tilted back. It should be, it should be on an angle like this. And if you look on the frame 
on the frame right here is two little tangs and those are supposed to support it but over time from this having being shot and used a lot this goes back and it starts slamming on the frame and it has actually worn the frame down it, those are no longer 90 degrees they're actually probably back about two degrees unfortunately from what I can tell there's no fix for it other than getting a new frame what I did is I ordered a new slide stop from uh, numeric parts and um, I'm going to actually put two welds on the back of it and then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna fit it to where it actually leans forward like it should and see if that fixes the problem so into the gun shop show you how to take that apart and uh, and then we'll we'll weld it and we'll repair it and see if we can uh, get this gun to work again because he he likes shooting it. all right let's uh Get into taking this puppy apart here. Um, once again, as I said, buy one of these Wheeler screwdriver kits right here. It will save you from dinging up screws and stuff. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take off that. Uh, slide stop make sure the gun is unloaded show clear All right, so what I, I forgot to uh, tell you guys, um, so when I was talking about when this gun was made, um, the first ones that came out just on the side right here uh, just had um, HD, high standard HD. That, that's, that's all that was, um, was on the gun. Uh, then uh, they made 6,900 of those between 1940 and 1942, I think. And then they came out um, and they put a high standard um, on it, a, a HD USA. And they made uh, 44,000 of those from 1943 to 1946. And then they made 150,000 of these that actually said uh, um, uh, HD military on them from 1946 to 1955. So, and then uh, let me get this top part off. So like I said... You just slide this back. That actually came off. But I want to show you that in a minute. Push that button down. Oops. Got to go all the way back. Push the button down. Slide forward. Drop that lever down. And slide it off. Okay, so this is just a little guard uh, that goes on here. The reason why you have to take this off is because there's a pin and it's got a detent in it that this fits in so you got to kind of um, you got to kind of lift this thing up let's see if I can zoom in more so you just kind of lift this up and then slide it back and you got to be careful because this right here is the uh, arm for uh, disengaging the sear on the hammer and uh, uh, you want to take that arm up, but there's a little teeny piece piece of flat metal in there that is a spring to hold that up against the sear. So you just want to make sure that you don't fling that across the room. It just it just fits in there in some notches. So this this just pulls up and comes out, and then this little teeny piece of spring metal right here fits in two little notches that are on this um, on this arm uh, or there we go it's hard to see <clears throat> once you have that off you can flip the gun over to this side and just uh, I know it's difficult to see you just slide this out that's the pin for the stop mechanism and there's a there's a uh, uh, in the in the once that pins out, this won't come out yet because there's a spring 
that's made to push the stop back so um, all you gotta do is just take a screwdriver and uh, um, push that spring down and then you can slide this off the uh, slide stop and then you can remove the spring uh, out of it <clears throat> so the parts that are worn and you really can't you really can't see it uh, very well here but you could you could definitely see when you're looking along the edge of the frame uh, to the side of this how much of that metal was worn off I, I would say by looking at it that at least a millimeter um, maybe a little bit more of those those metal ears on the frame is actually worn on it and if you want to drop the hammer like I'm gonna so I'm gonna be working on this thing you just go ahead and um, pull the sear down here and then it'll go it'll go back up okay now what I'm gonna do <coughs> excuse me I'm gonna take this piece and I am going to uh, put a couple little weld spots on the back there where I can see these marks where it's been hitting the frame and build that up and then I've got a little jewelers uh, mill press and I'll cut those out nice and straight and square and make it look like that's the way it was supposed to be. That should be enough. Okay. I've built up a little bit on there. It looks like crap right now. Uh, but we're going to set up the uh, mill press and then I'll uh, mill it down, see how it looks. Well, I'm going to admit it's not the most beautiful job, uh, but uh, but it's built up and it looks like it's going to work. So I'm going to put this thing back together again. So let's see. First thing. Okay, so I got the slide stop in the spring. And we got the stop. Okay, that works like it's supposed to. And now it's at a 90 degree angle um, where before it was leaning back. I basically welded about, I don't know, a millimeter and a half on there. I can start with that and then I can start milling it down um, if it doesn't work. And next, you put the trigger sear arm on, and then the uh, the little spring steel goes in those notches, and then the uh, plate that holds it all in that slides underneath. The slide stop pin and uh, then we put the safety on Safety works. Okay. 
There we go. And then we lock that back. Ooh, baby. Heck yeah. That worked. There's no gap in there. It's closing right to it. All right, we get to take this out and see if it'll shoot now. How cool is that? Uh, I'm going to load this up, and we're going to go out and uh, take some shots with it. See how it works. That was it. Didn't lock back. Heck yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> All you got to do is uh, beef up the back of that slide stop so that when, uh, um, when the slide goes forward, it closes that gap right there. And you're good to go. Um, this is a nice little gun. That was a, a, a nice, well, relatively simple fix if you've got a welder and a little uh, jeweler's lathe. Uh, hopefully my customer will be satisfied with it. She shoots nice again. She didn't do it before. You saw her earlier. Anyways, that's all I've got. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe below if you like this content. I've got some other stuff coming up. Be safe when you're shooting. Thanks.